Hey everybody, it's Mike, and this is a solo episode of the How'd It Happen podcast. And today, I'm going to be talking about why and how ideas thrive with an audience. Why ideas thrive with an audience. And I was inspired to do this podcast because I was listening to someone who was talking about, there was they were debating how college campuses in particular are dealing with or managing their way through what they're, you know, what some might call controversial speakers. So a speaker gets invited to campus and if the student body or some of the professors or whomever consider the, the speaker to be controversial or not aligned with their value systems or any number of other things, this on this podcast, they were talking about, well, what can you do? What can you do as a participant? What are your options for dealing with this? And they identified a few options. And the first option was the obvious one. You either go to the talk, you go see the speaker, or you don't go. And those, those are sort of the two, I, I guess, easiest and simplest ways. So if you want to see the speaker and you want to hear what the speaker has to say, you want to be able to ask questions of the speaker, you go. If you have no interest in the speaker and don't want to uh, ask the speaker any questions, don't care what the speaker has to say, well, then you don't go. Right? Simple. Then there's two other uh, choices that they talked about that I found very interesting that are more nuanced than go or, or, or no go. And the first one of those is uh, what, what these people called social bullying. So social bullying is basically the, the concept that if you go to see this controversial speaker that I don't like, appreciate, want to have anything to do with, or whatever you want to say about the speaker, then if you choose to go, you are no longer going to be my friend. You are no longer going to be my friend if you go see this speaker that I don't appreciate, like, want to be around, whatever. So that's sort of the passive aggressive approach to not going or not going, but basically saying, I'm not going. And if you do, you are now my enemy. You are no longer my friend. So I'm just kind of being passive aggressive. The other is, I think they called it an idea supremacist. So you're an idea supremacist, meaning your idea of what this speaker is going to talk about, or the idea of what this speaker is going to talk about against my idea of what I believe in are so misaligned that not only am I going to socially social be a social bully with everyone, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to be an active aggressor. I'm going to go and I'm going to prevent or do my best, very best to prevent anyone from coming to see this speaker. And as I was listening to all these things, I was thinking to myself, well, I understand the go and the no and the, or don't go. And I also understand, or I think I understand the desire to express your own opinion about whether you are in agreement with a particular speaker or a particular idea or you're not. I think where I get a little, uh, I, I get a little confused is this whole notion of ideas thrive with an audience. And when I'm doing like the social bullying, or when I'm doing the, you know, the idea supremacist thing, or I'm actively aggressive against it, it feels like I'm drawing a tremendous amount of attention to the idea, or the person, or the controversy. And I'm not so sure that drawing attention to something that I don't believe in is a very good strategy. I think drawing attention to what I do believe in is a better strategy. And as I was listening through this whole thing, that's what kept coming through to my mind. But I guess on top of that, I was thinking to myself that the, the, there's so much power that can be given to another person by the actions that you take or don't take. And in this case, these protests and you know this active aggression that you see, and then the, the you know you sometimes see universities calling off the speaker because they're afraid for the speaker's safety, which is, seems nuts to me. But they're afraid for this that 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 would be a legitimate concern. I don't think I'm not saying the safety is a, is nuts, or because they think that their students shouldn't be put in an environment where they're exposed to these kinds of ideas. I think it's a little short-sighted. I'm trying to think of in, like in my own life, uh, whether it's politics or friends or business or social relationships or whatever, uh, I'm constantly being exposed to ideas, some of which I think are 
great ideas and some of which I think are silly ideas and you might call them even controversial ideas. And I, I guess I've learned over the years that it's important for me to hear both sides, right? There's two sides to every story as the saying goes, but there's no way that someone that's expressing an opinion that I don't agree with is damaging me. They're only damaging me when I internalize how I feel about what they're saying and it makes me angry as opposed to me just paying them no attention. And so I want to leave you, I just want to leave you with this idea that ideas thrive with an audience and it works both ways. When you agree with someone and you give them an audience, the ideas thrive. When you disagree with someone and you give them an audience, the ideas also thrive. It's when ideas are ignored or when there's no audience for the idea that ideas naturally become suppressed. And I think that's probably the, the, the best approach, but I don't want to suppress an idea that I've never even taken the time to try to understand. I think that's, that just makes me ignorant if I try to do something like that. And I know that I'm only speaking for myself here, but I do believe that ideas thrive with an audience. So you have a choice to make. Are you going to let an idea that you agree with thrive because you're an audience for it? And or are you going to let an idea that you don't agree with continue to thrive because you are an audience for it? I thank you so much for joining me for this podcast today. I hope that your investment in the time has, well, I guess, given at least some value. And if it has, please consider sharing the episode. You can hit follow or subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use. You can watch the video of this podcast on YouTube and subscribe to my channel there. And until next time, please maximize your greatness and make your future your property, something that you are very proud to own. Hey everybody, thanks for listening to the show. And before you go, I just have three requests for you. One, if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing or following the podcast on whatever podcast platform you prefer. If you're really into it, leave me a review, write something nice about me, give me five stars or whatever you feel is most appropriate. Number two, I've got a book, it's called Ownership, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck. It's an Amazon bestseller. And I'd love for you to read it or listen to it on Audible or wherever else, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, you can get it everywhere. If you're looking for inspiration that will help you unlock your greatness and potential, order or download it today so that you can have your very own copy. And if you get it, please let me know what you think. Number three, my newsletter. I do a newsletter every Thursday and I talk about things that are interesting to me and or I give more information about the podcast and the podcast guests that I've had and the experiences that I've had with them. You can sign up for the podcast today at my website, which is my name, MikeMalatesta.com. You do that right now, put in your email address and you'll get the very next issue. The newsletter is short, thoughtful, and designed to inspire, activate, and maximize the greatness in you.